Just a quick reminder before we get into the lesson to download the hands-on lab exercises that accompany this full CCNA course. I'll include the link in the description. Also, remember to subscribe and hit the notifications bell so you don't miss any of the lessons in the course. Okay, let's get into it. In this lecture, you'll learn how to perform network automation using Ansible with a lab demo. I've already got my lab environment set up and I've got three routers there, R1, R2 and R3. And right now I've got no configuration on the routers other than I've configured them with an IP address for management. And I've also enabled SSH on there so that Ansible will be able to connect in and push the configuration. The configuration that I'm going to do is I'm going to add a new loopback interface to each router with an IP address. I'll also configure them with their NTP server and I'm going to enable logging synchronous on the SSH lines. So let's just verify the current configuration on the routers first. So I'll go to R1. I'll do a show IP interface brief and you can see it's just got its management IP address 172.23.1.101, R2 is .102 and R3 is .103. And if I do a show run and include NTP, you can see that the NTP server has not been configured and I'll do a show run and then scroll down to the bottom and you can see on my VTY lines for SSH access that I do not have logging synchronous configured on there. Okay, so let's now go on to the Ansible machine and get this set up. So I've already got Ansible installed on a Linux virtual machine, which is running CentOS. And let's check that Ansible is running okay on here. Actually, first off, I'll just change to my Ansible directory that I've already got set up on here. And then I'm going to say Ansible localhost for this local machine. And I'm calling the module ping. That is going to ping itself with Ansible. I can see I've got green success there. So Ansible is working just fine on my machine here. Okay, next thing is that I want to check my inventory that I've got R1, R2, and R3 added there. Now, before I look at the Ansible directory, let's just check that they're added to my hosts file here on this Linux machine, because I want to be able to connect to them by their host name as well as their IP address. So I will say sudo to elevate my privileges and then cat to read the file and it's etc hosts and then i enter my root password and i can see that i do have entries for r1 r2 and r3 with their management ip addresses okay next let's check the ansible inventory so for that i'm going to do sudo cat again and the inventory is in etsy slash ansible slash hosts and here is my inventory for Ansible. So you can see here that you can configure groups in the inventory. So let's just walk through what I've got configured here. So up at the top, I've added each of my hosts, R1, R2, and R3. And I've just put a comment in there. That's why it's got the hash at the front to say that those are individual hosts. Then I've also got groups configured as well. So R1 and R2 are 3745 routers. So I've created a group called Routers 3745. R3 is a 7200, so I've got a group called 7200. And then I've also created a group called Routers All, which contains the other groups of Routers 3745 and Routers 7200. So the reason I've got my inventory configured like this means that if I want to push some changes just to R1, then in my playbook, I can reference R1. If I wanted to push changes to all of my 3745 routers, then I can specify the 3745 routers group. And if I wanted to apply changes to all of my routers, then I apply that to the routers all group in my playbook. And that's what I'm going to be doing in the example here. So you can see here that when you are using Ansible for network automation, 
You could have different groups for your routers, for your switches, for your firewalls, etc. Also different groups may be based on the location of those devices. And that means that it's very easy to target where you want to send the configuration to. Okay, so my inventory is all looking good. Next up, let's see what files I've got in my Ansible directory here inside my home directory. And I've got my router config.yaml. That is my playbook that I'm going to be using. And I've also got a host vars directory. What this host vars directory is used for is if you want to specify variables for your individual host. You can also specify variables based on the groups as well. So if I wanted to configure variables, which are common to all of my 7200 routers, I could have had it for that group there. So let's see what is in host vars. So I'll do an ls host vars, and you can see that I've got a variable file for R1, R2, and R3. They are written in YAML. So let's see what is in there. So I'll do a cat host vars and r1.yml and in there you can see so you can see that this is a yaml file so because of that it starts with my three dashes and then i'm saying that the ansible connection is coming from this local machine and then i've specified my login credentials so the username is flatbox and the password is flatbox i've added a matching username and password on my routers obviously real world you're going to want to use a bit of a better password than that and then I've also specified the loopback address as well, because I'm going to be creating a new loopback interface on the routers with an IP address. Obviously, the three routers need to have a different IP address. So looking here, this is the R1, and this is the IP address. It's going to get on its loopback. And then if we have a look at R2, you can see that it's 10.10.10.102. R1 was 101 and r3 is going to be .103. Okay, so I've got Ansible set up on this machine. I have got my variables set up for my different hosts so that I can log into them, and I've also specified the IP address that's going to be used on the loop back there as well. Okay, next thing to do is let's check that I can connect in to the host via SSH to manage them. So the command for that is I'll do an ansible dash, the module is ping and all in the inventory, this is a, a default wildcard where, where you say all, it's gonna ping everything in the inventory. Now, when I do this, because I've got my credentials in those variable files, I need to do this from the same directory that those are in. So that I'm doing it from my ansible directory where I've got those variable files. So this should hopefully work. So I will hit enter. And what it's doing here is it doesn't just ping them. It actually checks that it can log into them as well. And I've got all success for all three of them. So that all looks good. So everything's set up now. I should be able to actually use my playbook to push some configuration to those devices. So let's have a look and see what kind of things that we can do with Ansible. And Ansible does have a load of network modules already built into it. So this makes your life really easy. So let's have a look and see what is available by doing a Google search for it. So you can see I've already set this up ahead of time. I've Googled for Ansible network modules, and I'm just going to look at the first hit there. And you can see that these are all the built-in modules in Ansible. So there's loads of them here. In fact, let's do a control F and I'll look for iOS. And then looking at iOS, you can see these are all the different modules that are built in for working with iOS routers. So we can manage our layer two, our layer three interfaces, BGP, etc. Also with the iOS config and the iOS command modules, you can send any command that you want to an iOS router. There's also modules for NXOS on Cisco, there's also going to be iOS XR, etc. So loads of built-in tasks in here, which makes it really easy to use Ansible for network automation. Okay, and all of these modules actually run as Python scripts. So let's just check that. So I'll go back onto my Ansible machine again, and I'm just going to copy this command from my other window here because 
this is the, the directory that those Python scripts are in. So I've looked for Ansible modules network, and if I hit enter, you see that ties up with all of the different sections of modules that were available when I Googled for this. You can see there's modules for, as I said earlier, iOS, iOS XR, NXOS, also Junos, etc., other vendors in here as well. And then let, let's look at the modules for iOS. So I'll put iOS in the end there. And you can see again, those are the modules that we just had a look at in Google. And you can see by the Pi extension that these are actually pre-built Python scripts in Ansible for managing your iOS routers. Okay, so next we're ready to actually push the configuration to the routers with the Ansible playbook. So let's have a look at what I've got written in there. So I'll do a cat routerconfig.yaml. So this is the playbook that I've written already. Let's have a walk through what I'm doing here. So it's a YAML file. So it starts with three dashes and then I've given it the name saying I'm going to be doing my router config here. I'm applying it to routers all. So that was the group that you saw in the inventory. The config is going to be pushed to all of my routers. Gather facts note, by default, when Ansible connects to the device at the start of the playbook, it will gather some facts about it. To save some time here, I am turning that off. And then I've got my tasks. The first one is, I've named it NTP server, and the module is iOS NTP, and I'm going to configure an NTP server of 10.0.0.1 on my routers, and that is going to be present. Okay, so if you just came to this completely new, you hadn't used Ansible before, and you know that you want to set the NTP server on your routers, how do you find out how you would do that? Well, you check the documentation. So I will go back to Google again. Let me just scroll through here to that, if I can find it. Okay, there we go. So I would look at the network modules, I would look in the iOS section, and there is actually one called iOS NTP. So I can be pretty sure that's the one to use for setting the NTP server. And the name of the module is iOS underscore NTP. So I do a Google search for that. And then that brings me to this page here, which is the documentation for that module. So you can see all of the different parameters that are available here. And a bit further down, it gives me some examples. So that was how I found out how to set NTP using Ansible. Very simple. So I have got that in my playbook. Other things I wanted to do was to configure logging synchronous on SSH sessions. Now, there's not a module which is dedicated specifically to this, but if I want to do any command, I can use the iOS config module. So that's what, I, what I'm using here. And then I'm saying the line that I'm going to add, the config I'm going to add is logging synchronous. And where I'm going to add that is under line VTY 015. Then I'm also going to create a loopback zero interface using the iOS interface module. And the name of the interface is going to be loopback zero. So that's how you create the interface. I need to use a different model to put the actual IP address on it though. So there I'm using the module iOS L3 interface. I'm going to configure my loopback interface. And because I need to have a different loopback address on my three different routers, I'm referring to the variable of loopback zero address. If you remember when we looked in the host virus file, I had a variable in there called loopback zero address, and then I'm calling it from here in my playbook. And then the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to save the configuration if modified. So that's using the iOS config module, and I'm going to save when Ansible, by running this playbook, has made some actual changes to the routers. Okay. So that is everything that I'm going to be doing there. So now let's actually run the playbook. So the command for that is Ansible, if I can spell it right, dash playbook. And then the name of my file was routerconfig.yaml. I'll hit enter and it's going to start running through the playbook. So you can see the first task is NTP server. It's going to be pushing the NTP configuration to my routers. And I can see it's changed R1, R2, and R3. So that all looks good. I've also set the logging synchronous on my SSH lines. I've created my loopbacks. I'm now adding the IP address to the loopbacks. And finally, I'm going to save the config. So that's been done on R1 and R2. 
it's just trying on r3 right now okay and it timed out on r3 so i could try that again these things can happen and i'll have demonstration you can see that that all worked just fine uh, apart from r3 okay so looking down at the bottom you can see i've got green for r1 and r2 and you can see that it's changed five things there on r3 it's red because okay it looks like it's managed to change the configuration but it just failed to actually save it okay so let's go back and check this now so i'll go into r1 i'll do a show ip interface brief and you can see there is my look back with dot 101 i'll do the same on r2 show ip interface brief and there is the look back with its ip address configured on there i know it's been done successfully on r3 as well and if i do a show run and include ntp there's the ntp server configured and the other one was logging synchronous so let's do a show run for that and i'll scroll down to the bottom and you can see that logging synchronous has been applied to my vty lines okay so all good so ansible was able to push the config successfully let's see something else that happens with ansible as well now so i'll just go back and i'm just going to run the playbook again just to show you the idea of ansible being adipotent it's quite hard to say and what it means is that when it goes to push configuration if it sees the configuration already there then it's not going to do it again so it's not going to overwrite it first off it checks is this already there if it is then i don't need to make any changes now when you do command line with the ansible module that will actually overwrite but the ntp server and everything else in there it's going to be unchanged so i can see that there was only one change on each router when i ran the playbook this time but when i ran the playbook the first time it made the, the full five changes okay so you can see everything in here was okay again still having a problem with r3 for some reason it's a different type of router i could troubleshoot that later but that was all i really needed to show you here to show you ansible in action doing our network automation see you in the next lecture thanks for watching if you'd like to get the complete course ad free right now then you can click on the link above my head or in the description to enroll in my ccna gold bootcamp it also includes full study notes quizzes and 150 pages of additional troubleshooting labs you can't find anywhere else